My name is Joey Turco. I am with Gamerati, and I am interviewing Eric Mona of Paizo. Hi. Uh, hi. <laughs> so we're here to talk about Kingmaker, specifically yeah. on Game on Tabletop. And I guess my very first question is, why Game on Tabletop? And why crowdfund at all? Well, <clears throat> Kingmaker is one of our adventure paths. It's a six-volume story that we published several years ago, in fact, 10 years ago. And on the 10th anniversary of what's kind of, in many people's eyes, our best or their most popular campaign that we've done, um, we knew we wanted to do a compilation. We've done compilations of some of our existing adventure paths before. Um, but the question is, with Kingmaker, you know, we just got a, a video game from our partners at Owlcat. Right, right, right. We've got, you know, uh, background products that, that we did at the time that we did this. So the campaign setting products and accessories and things. And so the question really is, we've got the opportunity to make this special campaign even more special by you know putting in as much of that stuff as we can, but we don't want to go over the expectations of the audience either. So it's kind of like a, a crowdfunding opportunity gives us the chance to say, how big of the book do you want? And then exactly. gives us yeah, the okay. funds to be able to produce a book of that size. So that's kind of what it's all about, is like, we, don't just, we know Kingmaker's special, we don't want to just do kind of the standard approach. It's also going to be the first hardcover compilation of a Pathfinder Adventure Path for our new second edition game. So we know that's a real special opportunity as well. So special, special, special. How do we put it all together? We've kind of been looking at a way to uh, dip our toe in the crowdfunding mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Officially, as Paizo, we've had some licensed partners and stuff do it in the past. But this is the first time we're doing it from our office. And it's an, you know our plan and everything. And so yeah, that's kind of why, why we're doing it. That's cool. Well, I, yeah. I mean, I know Legendary Games has done a lot of stuff mm -hmm. on Kickstarter, I think, specifically, and they've yep. done a lot of other crowdfunding stuff, so I'm sure that they're lending some of their expertise as well? Sure, they've been helpful. They're going to do a lot of the actual conversion work, especially okay. when it comes to getting... So we've got the Pathfinder 2nd Edition um, project, and they're going to help us with that conversion. They okay, also okay. have a lot of expertise with another popular game, which is 5th Edition, which is of. not one that we have the same level of expertise that we have, obviously, over Pathfinder, so we wanted to get a partner right. who brought that okay, expertise okay. to the table. And yeah, so Legendary's been helping out all kinds of ways. So then that brings me to my next question, actually, is why do a 5th Edition uh, best and I believe you're also doing a first, right? A Pathfinder first edition. Yeah. This year so as well. basically, what we've got is four books, two of which I'll talk about more in detail in a minute. We've got the okay. campaign book, which is the whole kit and caboodle, right, right. six adventures, the, the background stuff that you need to, to make it run, advice for downtime in between adventures, all that. Kind of okay. the standard hardcover compilation approach that we've done before. Then we've got another book, which is the companion guide. And that is, um, as the campaign grows, we're adding more companions from the Owlcat video game. Oh, and I each see. one okay. of those companions comes with stat blocks at several different levels, and also side quests and missions and like true adventure content that are tied to fleshing out the story of those characters. And okay. there's a bunch of those characters. We can get up to, I think, 13 different uh, uh, companions. Um, but the, the two products that we're talking about specifically are bestiaries. And what that is is a 5e bestiary that gives you all the stats for all the monsters and NPCs in the campaign, plus some extra stuff to help you convert the campaign. And then the first edition Pathfinder version uh, is very much the same thing. So it's the stat blocks, it's the monsters, it's the extra stuff that's unlocked as the campaign book and the, the companion guide grow and grow. And okay. so what those two products do is we don't, even if the Kickstarter was monstrously successful, we don't have the ability to do three full hardcover compilations of the thing, one for each each sure, rule sure, set. Sure. But what we can do is we can provide kind of a, a, a side volume in the form of a bestiary. Which so when you get to those rules necessary. elements, you're like, oh, let me flip to the thing. OK, here's a stat block. I'm good to go. And so that, that way, we can take what's been one of our most popular and most beloved campaigns and spread it out to the widest number of p players possible. So we didn't want someone to not be able to check out Kingmaker simply because they're not playing Pathfinder 2nd Edition. And okay, okay. so by going to the 5e crowd and saying, hey, maybe you've heard about how awesome Pathfinder adventures are. This one is super awesome. Maybe you want to give it a shot and take a look at it. Um, and we're going to try, with the help of Legendary, to make that as seamless a, a thing as possible. And similarly, um, the, the timing on this is because uh, 2010, um, I'm sorry, 2020, right. is, the, is the 10 year anniversary yes. of the initial publication of these volumes in 2010. We had to get this all figured out so that we can slate it on the product schedule to get it out in that 10th anniversary year. Right. And so that's kind of answering the why now question. Sure. But then, of course, the challenge is we're kickstartering, or I'm sorry, we're crowdfunding a 
uh, version of the campaign in an edition that we play tested last year, but which the final version of the rules are not out yet either. <laughs> so timeline wise, it's it's pretty crazy. Um, but we needed to do it that way so that we know how big of a book to make and how to ramp up for the production of that during the 2020 schedule season. Okay, uh, you you sort of touched on this uh, when I first asked the question. So the uh, the fifth edition and first edition bestiaries yeah. will have kind of conversion help. Yep. For the other games. That's the plan, yeah. When I was looking up the, the Game on Tabletop campaign, yeah. that was my primary question was, why aren't you doing all these different books? Right. Obviously, that's a huge... It's just too It's much a work. huge ask, yeah. but, uh, that's why. but to make sure that there are conversion tables in there, that's... Excellent news, yeah. actually. So what'll end up happening is you'll be like, you'll be reading, you know, um, this this adventure. This is the third adventure, the Varnhold Vanishing, and you'll be going through it just like a normal adventure, and you'll get to uh, Vordecai, the the nasty uh, undead Cyclops, right? And so in the second edition version, it'll be like, here's Vordecai, here's a stat block. You know, you can run it right out of the book because it's, it's a normal adventure. But if you've got that five E or that one E book off to the side, you then just flip, flip, flip. I'm in the V, Vorticai. Oh, here's a stat block on one yeah, page. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm good to go. And, so and the it's other... not quite as awesome as having like your own distinct version in your, your preferred thing, sure. but it's like, you know. But all the other like actual kingdom building and running rules are still uh, either yeah, convertible that, or right. already work. Uh, yeah, and we're going to put some effort into that as sure, well. Okay. So what I think is going to end up happening, and, and what so the the campaign book is growing, you mm -hmm. know, as the campaign grows. The ca the uh, companion guide is growing as the campaign goes. So I can't necessarily tell you right now. Ah, in the 160 pages that we have yes, slated for the 5e book, 140 of them will be stat blocks, and these 20 will be all this extra stuff. But the idea is to provide as much conversion. Uh, assistance as we can within the allotted page count. So then that actually... And I know that it won't um, fill up the 160 right. pages with stat blocks. So then that, that actually brings me to uh, the next little bit. You're segueing beautifully into these next oh, questions. Oh, well, excellent. I gotta say. Happy to help. Uh, I actually have a copy of the Shackled City, one of <laughs> hey, the... Hey, look at that. One of the older uh, right. books. That I guess there's only like 300 of them. It actually has... I believe your signature right in oh there. Oh my gosh, wow, um, that is even older. This is something that Ed brought to me recently because he said that one of the coolest things about this compilation was that it had like a rumor chart. Mm. Like a really cool mm -hmm. addition of mm -hmm. like, if you're at a specific level, you hear certain rumors. Mm -hmm. If you're a higher level, you can hear more intricate rumors and stuff like that. Yep. And we're excited to see like, what kind of cool new stuff might we see in the hardcover of Kingmaker that maybe we didn't get in, in uh, these guys. In the That's a great specific. question. Um, the Shackled City book that you were just holding is interesting. It's the first adventure path that we ever did as a company. And that was for D&D uh, &D under license uh, in the, Dungeon Magazine. For the Dungeon Magazine, and, exactly. Right. And so that was the one that kind of codified the idea of what an adventure path is all about. Um, we did two other ones. We did Age of Worms, and we did um, uh, the other one whose name is escaping me at the moment. Um, and then we were moving on to Pathfinder at that point. So then we followed up with... The Rise of the Rune Lords, exactly. big monster here. And then uh, shortly, a short while ago, we did Curse of the Crimson Throne, which is our second adventure path. And so all three of these books are good templates for kind of how we go about this in a, in a standard you know, right. conversion process. And that is to, you know, we're producing the individual volumes as monthly volumes. We've got a full outline. You know, we've got outlines for individual uh, volumes. But sometimes you get the sixth one in and you go, oh, if we had only foreshadowed that thing, a little earlier, like it, we, it would be even right. more meaningful. Or, hey, now that thousands and thousands of people have given us their feedback on how the game actually ran, it seems like there's a little gap in between Adventure 2 and Adventure 3 where maybe they don't have the right number of experience points if they skipped this one encounter. So maybe we need okay, to add okay. something there. So there's an element that is just kind of a, an overall development process that goes from Adventure 1 all the way to Adventure 6 that ties things together better, that foreshadows things better now that we have the full picture, right? So that would be how you get this book. That would be how 
you would get, oh, you know, hey, we should put some rumor charts in there. We right. should add, you know, both of these adventure paths here have the equivalent of about one full extra adventure that just didn't fit into the final thing, but that maybe our developers always wanted to do, or that the, the okay. audience has said, hey, uh, there's a lot of fighting in this one adventure. It'd be great if there was more social encounter. Okay, well, maybe there's a way to fit that in and make it a little bit more satisfying for everybody. So that is kind of been the answer, is that full dev process, maybe adding another adventure element or what have you. I think Kingmaker gives us an even bigger opportunity there because of, in, in large part, the Owlcat uh, video game. So right. what they did is they kind of took these original books and then they adapted it to the video game environment, the computer game environment. And um, in doing so, they added a lot of different new content. So for example, what the base um, campaign book for the Kingmaker campaign will have is a whole new prologue that comes from the Owlcat game. That's so really cool. in, in the first volume of, uh, of the original Pathfinder Adventure Path, Stolen Land, you uh, start essentially at this Oleg's trading post. And that becomes kind of a, a headquarters for you for a little bit as you're doing sort of exploration and exploring right, right. the landscape and clearing the landscape that will eventually kind of become your kingdom. In the video game, you're actually starting in a, in a noble manor house during so, sort of a gathering of various different folks. You get a little bit more background as to okay. what's happening happening in the campaign. And then of course there's a whole bunch of fights and, and there's an attack and, and you know. And so what we're doing is we're implementing that new prologue in that's like a new adventure in the game. There's also a epilogue that we're adding to the to the game. So that'll bring you all the way up to 20th level. The normal campaign Peter's added about 15, 17, somewhere in there. Okay. So we're adding even more content to make it cover all of the levels of play that are available in a standard Pathfinder okay. game. Um, and uh, here and there as the campaign escalates through crowd funding, we're adding other stuff. We're adding a whole new, maybe a whole new dungeon. We're adding a whole new, um, uh, more kingdom building rules and things. One of the great things about second edition Pathfinder is it really is like going down into downtime in a way that we didn't previously really delve as deeply into. So downtime, which is to say the period in between adventures where you're not mm -hmm. in an encounter or fighting a uh, thing. You're not really even in an exploration mode where you're like, I'm going to go and look and I'm looking for the cave entrance in the forest or I'm going to go into the marketplace and try and get some rumors. No, this is more like Five days pass, you know. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. So there's actually rules and game stuff for what to do during that period of time that didn't actually exist or didn't exist in such a robust way in first mm -hmm. edition. And so with second edition, that gives us the opportunity to look back at that kingdom building stuff and really say, how do we utilize this new rule space that second edition has given us to result in a more flavorful, more compelling, and ultimately more rewarding campaign experience? Because one of the things that makes Kingmaker so special is is it's not just a dungeon. It's not just a campaign. Yeah, that's it true. is a kingdom building exercise. You are the, the rulers of your own land. You're clearing hexes off of a map. You're exploring and you're expanding your kingdom. And the, the stuff that's happening in between the adventures where you're fighting monsters and making alliances is just as important in Kingmaker as that other stuff. So the hardcover book will really go even more deeply than the, the original campaign did into that realm. And that's pretty exciting as well. That's, that's really cool. Yeah. And uh, I'm very, very excited for Pathfinder Second Edition. So I gotta, I gotta ask: Are there plans to do these guys similarly, updated for Second Edition? Maybe. Uh, the honest answer is I don't know. Uh -huh. I mean, I think it's kind of a no-brainer, right? It's like, sure. I think it would make a lot of sense to bring a couple of our our most popular campaigns into Second Edition. There are also other out-of-print First Edition campaigns that people would really like us to bring mm, up to yeah. the, the modern version of the campaign. Uh, of the rules, so we'll see. I mean, I uh, I've got the schedule for Pathfinder Second Edition planned out into 2021, but there's a lot of space, ideally, on the you know the, the far side of that as well. And I would imagine that we'll get to some of these other um, uh, campaigns somewhere down the road. We'll see. Okay. We'll see. Okay. So part of the game on tabletop stuff yeah. is y you have it only as a two-week campaign, right? 
And that's up. That's because of PaizoCon coming up, correct? Yeah, I mean, like I said, the whole thing for us is kind of a bit of an experiment of trying to kind of figure out the crowdfunding thing, right? Mm -hmm. We've got some experience from watching Kickstarters, you know, right. that, that other people have run uh, under license, you know, for some of our stuff, and we've got a lot of contacts with Game On Tabletop in terms of the folks behind the scenes and what have mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. and it seemed like that gave us a lot of opportunity to kind of learn as we go, if you will, okay, to some degree. Sure. And so it, we've had a lot of flexibility to kind of really get under the hood and like change around this and that kind of in real time. And one of the things that people have been sort of asking us since the very day at launch was like, hey, two week campaign, you know, usually these are a month long, right, you know, sometimes even right. longer, like what gives? And the fact of the matter is, when we took all of our, our, our dates and everything and looked and said, okay, well, we, in order for us to uh, know how big of a book to make in 2020, we really need to do the, the crowdfunding early, certainly a little bit earlier than I would have liked, right? But it, it makes sense schedule-wise. It, it does. So you can't fight against the schedule, right. you know? The, it is what it is. I try to fight against the schedule every day. <laughs> say, even when I win, I lose. And so, um, so, so given that, um, and given that once we're on the other side of PaizoCon, our lives are really all about launching the new edition and focusing yes. on getting you know everybody up to speed on what new products are coming out and getting geared up for Gen Con. I mean, like literally the day PaizoCon wraps, about eight of us hop on a plane to fly to the UK to do their big UK Games oh, Expo, yeah, their big show. Yeah, that's We're right. not back till mid June. It, things are getting really dicey, you yeah. know, for some of us in between now and Gen Con, just in terms of the amount of effort that just getting second edition fully off the ground is going to take. So we looked at that. We said, hey. You know, we'd love to do a month-long campaign, but if we do, it's going to run right over PaizoCon. Uh, seems like that's not going to be the best thing for us in terms of ability to pay attention to the campaign, ability for our customer service people to answer questions about mm -hmm. the campaign, mm -hmm. etc. But as the campaign has gone on, and as now more of the customers are sort of saying, hey, what about a longer campaign? Or, um, you know, one challenge with a two-week campaign is like, that's a pay cycle for some people, and they might exactly, want an yeah. opportunity to, to have that non-rent check, you know, mm -hmm, come in and mm -hmm. all that. So we've been listening to that, and, and basically Paizo's always been really successful when we listen to the to the customers and, and do what they ask us to do. And so we took another look at it, and, and we you know, talked to our customer service people, talked to kind of everybody, and said, well, now that we kind of know what the load of this actually is, could we extend it? And, and then the answer for Kickstarter would be no, you can't. Obviously. But the answer for Game On is yeah, Maybe. you can. Yeah. So we made the decision we're going to extend the campaign another two weeks. That's so, awesome. Yeah. That's so, going to be great news. You know, there for might so many be a people. couple of days in there during PaizoCon where we're not necessarily Johnny on the spot with the answers that we ordinarily would be. But we figured giving people the opportunity to jump in overweighed that. And well, so, and this is such a community-driven thing. I right, think a exactly. lot of people would understand. Exactly. You know, well, exactly. PaizoCon's happening. Yeah. Let's give them a day. You know, right. And I'll, I also think, too, one of the things that, that, you know, it's like Game On gives us a lot of opportunities yeah. that Kickstarter doesn't, but it's also a much newer platform than Kickstarter That's true. is. So you don't necessarily have that full installed base of, like, people who get an email every time a new exciting game project pops on because they're not, maybe they haven't utilized Game On as right, well. You know. Right. So this is also an opportunity to just give people a little bit more time to, like, check out this new platform, yep. see if it's something they're interested in. And that's cool for us. We Which, just want to make the coolest book we can, really. Yeah, yeah. I guess I should like say the really coolest books on. that we yeah, can. Yeah, exactly. Uh, from you. <laughs> well, that's great to hear. I'm, Thank you. I'm super glad you were able to uh, uh, talk about this with me today. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that Game on Tabletop is just a, a great platform that anyone can use, just like Kickstarter. If you had any, if you, dear watcher, had any reservations about using Game on Tabletop, put that aside. And going back, Kingmaker, thanks again, Eric. Hey, great to talk to you. Yep. Thanks.